Iran's defense ministry says one of its factories was attacked by drones in the central city of Isfahan. Unverified video on social media claims to show the moment of the attack and when it was carried out. The minister says the attack was unsuccessful and it is unclear who was behind it. This comes after news earlier this week that the U.S. Justice Department has arrested three more people in the 2021 plot to kill a New York-based journalist and human rights activist, Masse Alenejad. She has been a vocal critic of the Islamic Republic of Iran. Here's some of that announcement from U.S. officials. Today's indictment exposes a dangerous menace to national security, a double threat posed by a vicious transnational crime group operating from what it thought was the safe haven of a rogue nation. Today's actions show that the United States will zealously protect freedom and hold accountable all those who would use it and to use violence to undermine it. And today, an investigation by Persian-language news organization Iran International suggests the assassination attempt was being carried out under the direct orders from the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps otherwise known as the IRGC. Masi Alinejad is no stranger to our program. We have spoken with her multiple times in recent weeks, and she joins us once again today from New York City. Masi, good to see you. I'm pleased being with you again. Masi, let's talk about getting that phone call from the FBI saying, we've got some news to share with you. Talk me through that process. Um, it was very shocking because um, I just learned about the details from the FBI on Friday. Look, um, I had a meeting with 12 FBI agents when they were giving me the details of uh, all these, uh, you know, criminals' uh, communications, the way that they were texting each other. I was like, wait a minute, is this really happening in 21st century? A man fr from, uh, you know, a criminal organization from Eastern Europe uh, being given visa to come to New York, um, uh, Mahdiov, and then sending photos from my house, taking selfie from uh, my garden and sending to another person in Iran and being in touch with a person in Czech Republic. And this is how they communicate and telling each other that we bought the gun and we are ready to kill her. One of the messages which actually made me shocked was the one actually they uh, Matthew sent the first person in Iran that today it's going to be done. So for me, it was very, very scary. But at the same time, I was not scared of, uh, for my life. It was a scary because I was like, this is happening in front of the eyes of free world. The terrorists are being given visa to come here. But I was thankful to the law enforcement to, uh, in, in America to protect me. But at the same time, I want the U.S. government to protect the national security, to protect the lives of Americans and Iranians inside who don't have any protection and facing these terrorists every single day. Masi, you addressed the network in your last answer. We're showing images of some of the men, some of the images that have been released by um, the police. The three men that were arrested just in the last couple of days, one is from Iran, one is from the Czech Republic, the other one is in Azerbaijan, and they're part of a larger international crime syndicate called Thieves in Law. And apparently, this crime syndicate works routinely with the Iranian regime. I mean, this is just a small window into how vast these networks, as you described, of terror are. Describe to me about where they are, how they're operating, to the best of your knowledge. Look, the Islamic Republic itself is a crime syndicate. And that's why they hire criminals from the same organization to do, uh, you know, the, their work abroad, outside Iran. And that is why, actually, Natasha, I use your platform many times to warn Canadian government, to warn Iran, uh, like uh, American government, that how Iranian regime is well known to use criminals to kill dissidents uh, abroad. I, when I saw, like, uh, one of the details uh, in my meeting with the FBI headquarters in New York, um, I, I got you know, shocked, but I was like happy. And I said, this is 
victory for the United States of America because this, it has been twice that you foiled kidnapping plot, assassination plot, but you have to call your allies. You have to call Canadians because the same group who were trying to kidnap me, they were actually trying to kidnap and hurt, harm like Iranian dissidents in Canada and in the UK as well. So that was my uh, concern that, look, I'm the only one now being protected by the FBI. My heart goes with Ruhollah Zam, the journalist who got kidnapped from uh, France to Iraq, from Iraq to Iran, and they executed him. My heart goes with Jamshid Charmad, who is uh, right now in prison, and he was uh, being kidnapped by the same, uh, you know, organization, the Revolutionary Guards, which is all, you know, we all know that Revolutionary Guards is behind this assassination plot. And let me make it very clear, we Iranians know that killing, kidnapping, assassinating is in the DNA of the Islamic Republic. This is the time that I want to take the attention of the rest of the world, that we have to put, we have to designate Revolutionary Guards as a terrorist organization, and we have to convince the leaders of G7 uh, to isolate Khamenei and his gang of killers, the way that they did to Putin. Masi, I don't want us to run out of time, and there are a couple of other things I want to ask you about. In fact, I'd like us to play some video that you posted on Twitter in July of 2021. And the reason why I want to post that is because you've been such a pillar of strength for the community um, of the secular Iranian diaspora for so long. But this video on the screen now from July 2021 is of you... I believe you've been crying. The stress is visible on your face, and you're looking out your home window to see a police presence there because you were being protected by the police after the initial arrest and the foiling of the plot to have you assassinated. You seemed at that moment as your most vulnerable, and today you seem incredibly reinvigorated and strong. I wonder, between now and then and now, I suppose, do you feel safe? Is this over this particular chapter of of a plot to kill you. No, the word safe is too luxury for us who dare to criticize the Islamic Republic. As far as the Islamic Republic is in power, none of us, not Iranians, not people in the region, not people in Ukraine, not people in Canada, none of us would be safe. So that is why I decided to dedicate my life to give voice to Iranian brave leaders, women, people inside the streets that they are facing guns and bullets every day. But you know what they say? They said that this is just the beginning. This is one of the most progressive revolution. We know that freedom is not free. We know that we might not be able to go back to our home after protesting against the Islamic Republic, but this is it. We are there to end the Islamic Republic. Masi Alinejad joining us from New York City.